Good day, two keys, and welcome to your next topic on parabolas. Our goal today, I can determine if a relationship is linear or quadratic by looking at the first and second differences. So we're going to look at the rates of change in a quadratic relation. If you have not already done so, uh, you need to complete the investigation on page 264 to 266 of your textbook, and be sure that you copy and complete each table in your notes. So if you have not done that, you need to shut me off right now, and then come back on a little bit later. Um, below is a linear relation graphed on the graphing calculator. Um, and so I've shown you here, this is y equals 2x minus 4. And this is the line that it graphs. And I use the graphing calculator to give me this table of values for it. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is calculate the first differences for the table. So when I calculate the first differences, I'm looking at the difference between two successive entries in the Y column, and I have to take the second one, which is in this case is negative 8, and subtract negative 10. Now remember, when I have negative 8 subtract negative 10, those two negatives in the middle change to positive, so it's negative 8 plus 10, uh, which gives me a positive 2. Then from going from that one to that one, I go negative 6 subtract negative 8. And subtracting the negative 8 changes to the positive, and that gives me a plus 2. In fact, if you actually just look at this, you can see that it's increasing by 2 every time. You don't actually have to do this calculation, uh, but you can if you need to. And so um, from going from 1 to the next, we are increasing by 2 every time. So the difference is 2. Now, when we worked with, uh, remember when we worked with linear relations, the difference in the y's along with the difference in the x's gave us slope, and slope was a rate of change in the relationship. So slope, and we gave it a value of m, was the change in the y divided by the change in the x. And in this case, the change in the y is 2, but the change in the x, if we take a look at this side, it's going up by a constant amount of 1 every time. So it's 2 over 1, which means that the slope in this case, or the rate of change, is simply 2. So it has a constant rate of change all the way along its graph, and that constant rate of change is 2. So as long as our x's go up by 1, the difference in the y's is the rate of change in the relationship. So what happens if we take a look at one that's quadratic? So this one, hopefully you'll see that it's quadratic. Here's the equation, and we know it's quadratic just by looking at the equation because of this little squared term here. We have to have an x squared in order for it to be quadratic. We know it's quadratic by looking at its graph because it's that nice smooth curve of a parabola. And so now we're going to take a look at its table of values. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the, uh, with the line. We're going to take a look at what each of these go up by. So as I go from 10 to 1, that is actually going down 9, and I can get that by doing taking the second one, 1, minusing 10, and that tells me it's 9. Then when I go from 1 to negative 4, I'm actually going down 5. And again, I can do the calculation. I can take negative 4 and subtract 1, gets me negative 5. Next one, from negative 4 to negative 5, uh, I can do the calculation, negative 5, Subtract negative 4, and again, when you have two negatives, it's actually a positive, and so that gives me a negative 1. Oops, I should have had a negative on that 9. And the next one, negative 5 to negative 2. If I want to do the calculation, negative 2, subtract negative 5, and again, those two subtracts change to a plus, so that gives me 3. And from negative 2 to 5 is going to be 7, but again, we can get it by going 5, subtract, negative 2. And when I subtract a negative, it's actually only a positive, so that gives me 7. And then 16, subtract 5, gives me 11. So you can see whatever we have here, it's not actually a constant difference. So we know if I didn't have these two things over here, we could tell just from the table of values that it's definitely not linear, because it doesn't have a constant rate of change. Now, if I want to know if it's quadratic or not, I have to go to the next one. And I do these, 
these differences here. Okay. Um, so negative 5, subtract negative 9. Negative 5, subtract negative 9. And again, those two negatives turn into a positive. Gives me 4. Negative 5 plus 9 is 4. Negative 5, sub, or, sorry, negative 1. Negative 1, subtract negative 5. Again, those two negatives change to a plus, and I get up 4. Then we can just have a look from negative 1 to 3. That goes up 4. This goes up 4. This goes up 4. Now we do have a constant change once I take a difference of the difference. So note, the first difference still gives us a rate of change, but for a quadratic relation, that's not constant. Uh, the bigger the difference, the faster the relationship is changing. So this relationship gets faster and faster as it goes up. This gap here from 5 to 16 has a much faster change than the gap that goes from uh, negative 2 to 5. Okay, So that's a faster rate of change too. And then when we get to the second difference, when I know the second differences are constant, then it's obviously quadratic. So let's have a look. In the above relationship, we know it's quadratic in three ways. The equation has an x squared. That has to be true if it's quadratic. The graph is a parabola. And the table has a constant. And here's what we say it. It's a second difference. When we take the difference in the y's and they're not constant, then we have to take a difference in our differences, and if that's constant, we know it's quadratic. If it's not, then we say it's neither. So summary, if we have a table of values and the x column has a constant difference, then we take the difference in the y's. If the difference is constant the first time we do it, then the relationship is linear. If the relationship is not linear, then we take a difference of the first difference. And if that is now the same, then the relationship is quadratic. And if it's still not the same, then we say it is neither linear nor quadratic. So let's look at a few examples. Determine whether each table represents a linear relationship, a quadratic relationship, or neither. The first thing we have to do is make sure that our x's go up by a constant amount. There has to be a constant difference between all of our x values. And those x's go up by 1. These x's go up by 2, so they're good. These ones go up by, we go negative 1. Those go up by 3 every time, so they're good. And these ones go up by 1, so they're good. So any, as long as our x's go up by a constant amount, this test works. If our x's didn't go up by a constant amount, we don't have enough information to solve this. So now I have to take the differences here and see what they go up by. So from 4 to 5, I'm going up 1. From 5 to 6, up 1. 6 to 7, up 1. 7 to 8, up 1. Since all of those are the same, this thing is linear. Let's look at B. 3 to 4 is up 1. 4 to 7 is up 3. 7 to 12 is up 5. And 12 to 19 is up 7. Okay, So it's not linear. Those things have to be the same if it's linear. Since it's not linear, I'm going to do this again. And 1 to 3 is up 2. 3 to 5 is up 2. 5 to 7 is up 2. Since it, they are all the same this time, this thing is quadratic. It will form a parabola if we graphed it. Okay, looking over here, 0 to 1 is up 1. 1 to 8 is up 7. 8 to 27 is up 19. This thing's getting fast in a hurry. And 27 to 64 is up 27. Actually, 37. So that's a lot. How about up from 1 to 7 is up 6. From 7 to 19 is up 12. I don't have to go any further. This is neither linear nor is it quadratic. Now the next one, 6 to 0 is down 6. 
and then 0 to 12 is opsic, and 12 to 42 is op 30, and 42 to 90 is op 48. Now, from negative 6 to positive 6 is a jump of plus 12. And you can, you can punch into your calculator positive 6, subtract negative 6, and it'll give you 12. Um, from 30 to, for from 6 to 30, if I do 30, subtract 6, I get 24. And once again, uh, I don't have to go any further. This is neither linear, nor is it quadratic, because the first difference is not the same, and the second difference is not the same, so it's neither. Make a table for the sum, and sum means add, of the first five integers. What kind of relationship is it, and how do you know? Okay, here's what I mean. I need to explain this a little bit more. The sum of the first integer, well, the first integer is 1. So the sum of 1 doesn't make any sense, so we're just going to call the sum 1. Then when I go to 2, I have to add 2 and 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So that's the sum of the first two integers. The first three integers are 1, 2, and 3. If I add them together, that makes 6. The sum of the first four integers is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this was 6, and I have to add the 4 onto it, which gives me 10. And the sum of the first five, well, I'm basically just adding the next one onto it, so that's 15. Now it says, what kind of a relationship is it? How do you know? Okay, well, let's have a look. Uh, from 1 to 3 is an increase of 2. From 3 to 6 is an increase of 3. From 6 to 10 is an increase of 4. And from 10 to 15 is an increase of 5. It's not linear. If it was linear, those would all be the same. Now let's do it again. That goes up 1, up 1, uh, up 1. Since these are all the same, the second difference is the same. Therefore, this is quadratic. And that completes this lesson for today.